everybody. Welcome to video three of our series. It's about dialogue and plot, and how to mix those things together. In our previous videos, we've talked a lot about the hero's journey, which is going to be our guideline and our structure for the script that we're going to write. Now, I've given you this guideline and structure to help you on your first journey, to help you know how to get from point A to point B to point C, and so on and so forth. But even as you're stopping by all of those points, You'll need to get there via some dialogue, some words, some characters that are speaking actual sentences. So in these next couple of videos, I'm going to give you some exercises that you'll need to work through and some guidelines and maybe some suggestions on how you can get it done in the situation that we're all in of being inside. It's going to take some creativity and at the end of the day, it's up to you on how you get them done. But I challenge you to do your best and work with your family a little bit and the folks that are around you in helping you achieve these goals. This would be, as I said, a great time to ask for help from siblings, parents, guardians, who, whoever's in quarantine with you who can help you out here as well. It's a great way to help get your family involved. Now, let's start this video by asking some questions. These questions, I'm not going to provide answers to. I want you to start to think about these questions as we start to talk about dialogue. So, question one. Do the lines give enough information for the people to understand what's happening in the scene? And in counterpoint, does it give too much? Question two. What do the lines that the characters are saying say about the relationship they have to one another. Question three, is your story engaging? Are people going to be interested in watching it? Are you interested in watching it? Question four, do we understand things about the scene and the characters that were not explicitly stated in the dialogue? Is there what we're going to call subtext? What is our characters thinking? How are you getting that across? How do we, the audience, understand those things without you telling us them? Can you include that in stage direction? Can you include that in your word choice? Can you do both? Question five. Does the interactions of your characters feel true to life? Why or why not? These questions will help as you move forward. Next up, I want to give you some tips and tricks to writing. These are things that writers think about as we're putting words on page. Getting words on page is the number one hardest thing that a person can do. So I challenge you as you're writing to just get those words on page. But as you're thinking about what types of words to put on page, Let's talk a little bit about four things that will really help us dive deep into getting this text. So, first and foremost, exposition. Exposition is what a character needs to say that we need to understand. Do we need to understand that there is magic in your world? Do we need to understand that your character was a farmer? Do we need to understand that your character is worried for the safety of their friends or families? What is it that we need to know about them? This exposition is absolutely necessary and it will become what moves your story forward. If you tell us something early about a character, we're going to remember it as we go through our story. Exposition can be handled in many different ways through conversation, through humor, through introduction of a new character to the ordinary world, to lots of different ways of handling it. The most important thing is that you think about what information is necessary and what information is not necessary. Sometimes with exposition, we get to the end and we realize we've given too much. This is where rewriting comes in, and you can definitely go back and edit and change. Ooh, I don't need this information. It's helpful for me as the writer to know, but not my audience to hear. The opposite can be true as well. Sometimes you get to the end and realize, oh no, I never said this part of the character out loud. 
so I need to go put that back in. The next element we're going to talk about is subtext. Subtext is exactly what it sounds like. It is information or ideas that is communicated by other than your words. So if you've ever thought somebody was trying to say something to you and it wasn't quite what they were saying, that's subtext. It's what your characters mean when they speak. Not always are characters allowed to say what they want to say out loud. There might be a villain nearby who can't overhear some information. They might be in a place where not everyone needs all of the information said. Or you might be greeting someone who you've greeted a million times over and you wouldn't necessarily be like, why hello brother, how are you? Because you know and he knows that you are both siblings. Avoiding repetition is really helpful when you're writing, and so if a line is written cleanly and concisely, then the audience will understand that. You can use your stage directions, and sometimes as you're working with your actors, or, or as your director will work with actors, they can help with this subtext as well too. But you can add little bits and pieces of information in there. If you have a couple in there, maybe there's a, a pet name that they could use. And that's pretty clear sign that there is some sort of previous relationship that there is there. Subtext is all about finding those ways to tell the audience there's more going on than just what you're seeing here. Does every line need to have a lot of subtext? to some, so you're not being repetitive and overwriting? Absolutely. So figure out ways that as you're talking, you can get little pieces of information into the dialogue. Is somebody celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? And we'll know that's important. Uh, do we care about them in some way, shape, or form? Uh, is something happening and maybe somebody is tired of it happening so they're calling it out loud? Who knows? Up to you. You can figure out how to add that subtext in. But just know it's an important thing to think about. The next thing we're going to talk about is logic. Things have to make sense. It's plain and simple. If it doesn't make sense to you, it's not going to make sense to your audience. If it makes sense to you with a overt, complex explanation, then it may not make sense to your audience. Now, you can put that complex explanation in your play, and then it may make perfect sense. But I want you to think of what's important to your world and what details are needed. If it doesn't make sense to you, it's not going to make sense to your audience. Logic is very important. Thinking about would someone make this choice is very important to keeping your characters relatable. Now that someone doesn't always have to be you, but that someone can be someone who is in a real world scenario or setting. Understanding other people's point of views is a really helpful way in looking at people's internal logic and how they're going to move and how they're going to act and what they're going to sound like and what words they're going to choose to say. I would give this lecture different than you would give this lecture. I would give this lecture different to a different group of audience depending on who's listening and who's watching. So the logic of who I'm talking to and who you're talking to and who your characters are talking to is very important as well as the logic of does it make sense? Does this element of magic or does this element of a relationship or does this element of your adventure, does the audience know what's going on? Just because it makes sense to you doesn't mean it's always clear to them. So make sure that you're adding those elements in. The fourth tip for you here is what I call true to life. Dialogue doesn't have to be real all the time, but it does have to sound like it's real. Real conversation is actually kind of tedious. We ask for repeats, we speak in shorthand, we don't use complete sentences. All of these things are really hard for audiences to follow and understand. However, sometimes it's perfect for a character. And I know that's confusing, but what you need to do is find a way to find your dialogue to be as real as it possibly can be. 
while avoiding phrases that are cliches or something that might sound really uncomfortable when your character is talking. If it sounds natural to you, maybe it'll sound natural to the audience. But if it sounds natural to you, should it be coming out of your mom's mouth or your grandma's mouth? Maybe they speak a little bit different. Understanding people, understanding how they would talk and speak is very helpful. That's why in the previous video, I had you all start to think about and listen to what people are saying and react in that dialogue that you're writing down to that other conversation. If you haven't done that exercise, feel free to go back and do that exercise. It's a really helpful way of listening to how other people talk. Word choice matters. So when you're staying true to life, Make sure that you're staying true to life, but balancing that edge of finding only the necessary interesting conversational points. That's difficult. That's something that takes a lot of time and skill and effort to master. Do I expect you'll get it right the first time? No. Do playwrights who have been doing this for many years get it right the first time? No. Rewriting is very important. Get those words on page then rewrite them, and then figure out what it sounds like. It's important to start writing, and you'll do so coming soon. All right, for this next step, you're gonna need to find a partner. This partner can be someone with you in your house. Maybe you can Skype someone, or call them on the phone, or just find some way to share the dialogue with them. But you'll need a partner to work with, someone to say both sides of the dialogue. I want you to grab that piece of paper or that computer or however you type down that conversation that you recorded. And I want you to say it out loud. I want one person to read one side of the dialogue and the other person to read the other side of the dialogue. If you happen to be doing this assignment with a person who was saying the dialogue before, have them maybe read the other side so that you can hear it as well. After you do this, I want you to discuss how this conversation sound. What, what did you observe? Was there subtext? Was there logic? Was there exposition? Was it true to life? It was a real life conversation, but how does it sound written down? This is where we can sometimes find that balance between real and too realistic. Sometimes, yes, real dialogue doesn't often give you exposition, and it wouldn't give the audience member something to understand. So you would have to insert some of that into your dialogue. Real dialogue often makes sense because it's coming from human to human, and there's context around it. But real dialogue also means that sometimes we ramble and sometimes we repeat ourselves and sometimes we stutter and stammer and sometimes those are acting choices you want your actor to make but sometimes they're not and so that's something that you get to start choosing. The writer has a lot of control over what these characters are going to look and sound like. You can start making some of those choices with your dialogue. Feel free to pause this video and to go do that exercise, and then come back for the next part. Alright, welcome back. Next up is again another exercise, so I hope you've still got some folks near you. If not, go get them back after you listen to what I'm going to say. So here's the exercise. You can play this for them, and I'll help explain it to them too. Gather as many folks as you can. Go ahead, find as many as you can. Two is just fine. Somebody that's more than you. Again, this could be a conversation over Skype or FaceTime or Zoom or any other equivalent application. You could call people on the phone, get a group call going, or if you have a large family, grab some siblings, grab some parents, grab some grandparents that are all here trapped in a house with you and just sit in a circle. Get everybody in a group in a circle. Now, you're going to tell a group story. This story is going to be told one sentence at a time. Each person is going to take a turn to tell their part of the story. Now, if you have a smaller group, you can determine how many times you're going to go around the circle so that way you know how many sentences your story has. If you have a larger group, let's say 
five or more. If you have a larger group of five or more, you're going to go around the circle once. And keeping in track of where in the story you are. Keeping track of what you want to happen. Now, you're only going to contribute one sentence to this story. If you're going around several times, you may be contributing more than one sentence, but you're not contributing every sentence. Everyone needs to be aware of where they are in the story and what's happening. This doesn't mean that we make a plan, that we know our characters are going to go from A to B to C to D. What this does mean is you need to be aware of where you are in the story. Are we at the beginning? Are we still establishing exposition? Are we in the middle? Are we fighting our trials? Are we going over our obstacles? Are we resolving conflicts? Have we gone past our moment of crisis? Are we heading back towards home? Or are we near the end? Are we wrapping things up? Do we need to be finding ways to end the story rather than prolonging the story? All of these elements are really important. Try this exercise a couple times and be in different areas. After you do that, come back to this video and I'll have some more questions for you. Welcome back everybody. I hope you had a fun time with that exercise, that game. Now, here are some questions for you. Was it frustrating to not be able to take the story exactly where you wanted it to go? Was it frustrating to say what you wanted to say and then have other people do something else with it? Question two. Do you feel limited by being able to only say one sentence? Do you wish you could add more to it? Were you only able to add one thing and maybe that was near the beginning or the end? Was that frustrating? Question three. What did you change about your sentence after the story evolved. Did this story change as you were listening to it? How did you adjust to it? When it finally got to you, were you able to say what you wanted? Or did you have to work and listen to everybody else as they're telling their story? Question four. Why did you have to change your ideas? I'm going to assume that the answer to question three was yes, you did have to change some things. And hopefully that is true. If not, I would suggest trying your story again until you're listening and working with the people around you. So why would you have to change some ideas? Because of the time constraints around you? Because of the requirements of the story? Maybe because of what your characters had done in other sections? Listening and reacting to how your characters move, whether it be your idea or influenced by the characters themselves. As with any piece of art, there are restrictions or limitations that you might find while you're writing. These restrictions and limitations are not bad things. There are things that you're going to work with and the challenges that you have placed in front of you to be able to tell your stories. Sometimes time is a restriction. You don't want your play to last seven hours long and make everybody sit there for hours on end as you pontificate about how wonderful your hero is. Well, sometimes even the medium of theater is a restriction. We don't have computers. We don't have multiple takes. We are live in front of you. Sometimes being stuck in your house with only your family and the things around you and not being able to leave for days on end is a restriction. Well, that's something that we're all dealing with right now, or maybe you're watching this in the future. And hello if you're out of quarantine. But how do these restrictions inspire you to tell your story? Try to make these challenges be creatively addressed in your work. Work with them, not against them. It also means that sometimes in our plays, we have to think about how we're telling the story. Some of these restrictions might be your audience's attention span. Can they handle a great deal of excessive narration at one time? Usually not. Can they handle every single little detail needing to be described to them? 
sometimes not. They like action and they like things moving forward. Action doesn't mean that there is lots of fighting or beats. It just means that their characters are dealing with the internal struggles and conflicts as they're moving forward. Keeping these scenes in mind and keeping your shows only to the necessary beats and moments. You're going to write more than you need. It just happens. You're going to love some scenes and have to get rid of them. That is a very hard challenge. Now, sometimes we have to limit ourselves in terms of what we have to work with. Plays are not movies. Musicals and plays are very different. The Some examples include maybe you can break into song or not, or you might have multiple locations or not. One thing when you're writing to keep in mind is that montage, a very common thing in film, which is where we cut together a bunch of little scenes with a song and we're improving and or we're passing time, is not really a thing that's done a lot in theater. So avoiding a montage in your play is helpful for your technical crew and the people that you're writing for. It's not impossible. And as plays move forward, we're using more montage. But it's something that is very specific to film and television, a medium that you're probably very familiar with, as opposed to theater and theatrical nature. So we want to try to avoid that. Here are some more questions that'll help you as you start to get to writing. You're really close at this point. You're gonna start to get your words and dialogue on page. You might have already done so. You might have been working ahead of me a little bit. And that's okay too. We've talked about that writing is rewriting. But here are some questions to help you out as well. Question one. Does the story have each element of the plot that we talked about with the hero's journey? Question two. Does it have an attention getting start? Are we capturing the audience's attention? Are they paying attention to what we're saying? Question three, do the characters, actions, and relationships interest you? If they don't interest you, will they interest your audience? Does the audience remain interested and engaged throughout? Is there any time where it's feeling a little long and that we may need to cut? Vice versa, are we leaving information out? Do we need to know something? Finally, does the story have a satisfying end? Meaning, did our characters learn and grow? Did we listen to what our characters wanted throughout the play and help them achieve their goals? Now, finally, you have your two previous outlined worksheets as well as a new page called Play Assignment Description in which you can start to write your play. This play assignment description will help you with some guidelines on what we're looking for in terms of how we're writing out our play. Remember, this is your first draft. You may already have a draft written, but let's go again. Let's see what we can go through to rewrite and edit. This is your first draft. Playwriting is rewriting. It's going to be written many, many times before it's complete. The important thing is that you get your words on page. If you haven't started writing yet, which you may not have, you may be watching through these all at once, doing the exercises, great. Now's the time to get those words on that page. Your goal, by the time you come back to the next video, is to be about halfway finished. Let's say you're shooting for about a 10 minute play. That's a really good length. That would be about 10 pages of dialogue. Can you get your story told in those 10 pages? That's up to you. If you're about halfway finished with about a 10 minute play, you're gonna have about five pages written. Will you rewrite these pages? Yes, yes you will, but just get something down. I'm excited to hear about them, I'm excited to see them, and I'm excited to see what you create. Creativity is key. All right, friends, get to writing, have fun. We'll see you for our final video.